I'm particularly intrigued by the book, Letters to My Future Wife, because of a number of reasons. Manasseh is a very good storyteller who uses everyday experiences to creatively tell compelling stories about the maze of life and its intricacies. Even if you disagree with the content, you are still entertained by the writer's dexterity and the quality of what you read. I also find this publication interesting because of the enormous lessons it presents to its readers. This book contains lessons for the single and the married, the young and the old, the naive and the inexperienced, in fact the experienced even, as well as any open-minded person who is prepared to learn from the experiences of others. When you read this book, you realize that everything in the book is so real. It's so real. And uh, for me, uh, I'm going to use it as part of my counseling material. Because you know that so many issues have come. And I, I hope that uh, the clergy will do that too. And the joy is that it is such an easy read and you'll be able to pick a lot of ideas and counsel people who are getting married, who are already in marriage, and who are on the fringes of marriage. It is only love that will push an investigative journalist to write 30 letters to his future wife. They are not your regular love stories, overflowing with flowery language and poetic references. Neither do they have hints of your signature SSS love letter lyrics like the brightness of this day has afforded me the opportunity to pen you this letter. No, none of that. He is painfully blunt, hockey, a little jealous, passionate, revealingly honest, and annoyingly correct. He begins every letter by tenderly addressing her, dear Sarah, and ends with on this, we will build our marriage, and the gates of divorce will not prevail against it. Yours truly, Manasseh. The letters have a good helping of proverbs that will tickle you and make you smile and slowly nod your head. One moment, he's explaining why he will not pay for an extravagant wedding, like an expert lawyer delivering his closing statements. The next moment, he proudly pledges to wash his wife's panties. After warning her to keep her female friends away from him, he dispels any dreams of a fairy tale Instagram moment by telling her that he will not propose marriage to her. He warns her that the man who lives in Lungwa and yet drives all the way to Gansuman every evening after work just to drop in is not merely fulfilling the biblical commandment to be kind to our neighbors. He tells her not to allow something as small as a mobile phone to erode the trust they share. He hints at what Sewa may have done to win his mother over. He reminds us to present our spouses to the world in a better light than they actually are and not compare them with other people. For all you know, Mr. Mensa may not be trying to win world's best husband by opening the door for his wife. The car door may probably be faulty and can only be opened from the outside. So don't be hasty to compare and to accuse blindly. He pledges not to have sex with her again after they're married, and yet urges her to treat him like her husband, even during their courtship, regardless of the fact that he has not yet traveled to her home to ask for her hand in marriage. He cuddles her to make herself a comfort opera. He tells her the story of how Nanaba the house help stole the heart of the church elder Mr. Boidia Powell from his beautiful wife simply because she respected him and made him feel like a king at home. Manasseh makes references to things we can identify and people we can recognize as he writes, making us feel as though everything is happening in real time. Sometimes we wonder whether or not he realizes that those people might actually read the letters as well. But as Kofiya Kadmi says, Manasseh is a bold man. It appears that boldness we see splashed all over his investigative work also seeps into his love letters. We don't have the pleasure of reading Sewa's responses to the letters, but he makes references to her reactions. 
On some days, she probably feels like the luckiest girl on the planet. Just like us, on some other days, she's shocked, offended, shy, angry even. You will be too if your future husband was chastising you in the full glare of his 500 friends and over 8,000 followers. I'd like to believe that when Manasseh met the real Sewa, the letters became a little more personal. She was no longer a figurative character, a figment of, of his imagination. She was real, a living and breathing woman who returned the love he had for her with her beautiful smile, thick natural hair, and a great sense of humor, which you all saw today. I imagine that she is just what the doctor ordered, and as such, he lovingly reminds her of his undying love for her in every one of the letters. My name is Mao Kedi Padiki Kujo, and I'm a storyteller. It has been an honor to review Manasseh's latest book, Letters to My Future Wife.